Welcome, guys, to the second podcast. I'm joined here by premium analyst in the form of Nasser Hussain. And uh, we have a lovely guest joining us this time, Adil Hassan as well. Uh, you might be aware of uh, Adil from uh, the commentary box. Uh, yeah, he, do, he does a fantastic job, really. And uh, yeah, welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Adnan. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Adnan. It's um, good to see you again from last week. Fantastic. Yeah, likewise. Unfortunately, Azahat Salim, otherwise known as scientist, cannot join us this time around. And we were expecting another guest, uh, Aves, to join, but uh, because of work commitments, he can't join. But uh, let's let's crack on, guys. Um, I think, obviously, yeah. firstly, we'll uh, speak with the current standings. The Firth Park Warriors, once again, are uh, at the top of the table. But uh, I did point this out, and Nasa, I think you elaborated on this point, that there's very little gap in the first, you know, five to six teams at the moment. And, uh, you know, things can go in any direction. It is to be noted that the teams six and seven, they've only played four games as opposed to the rest of the table. So once Page Old Panthers, for example, have played five, they may well find themselves in the number three position really quickly. Um, but yeah, this, I think, definitely, you know, m- makes for a very interesting setup in the coming two weeks. So yeah, any comments on that, Nasser Hussain? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's left a, a quite a big gap uh, from uh, number four onwards, you know, so number four, five, uh, and number six uh, is, is left a little gap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's a, it's a brilliant comeback from City Strikers. I mean, where they were from, uh, where they were last week and where they are now mm-hmm. uh, after that big defeat against, uh, after that big victory against um, Fe- Feville. Uh, it's a big, it's a big uh, jump from them. And uh, yeah, it's, and- it's looking... It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the critical things, I think, for number four or five, like I'm looking at City Strikers and Fur Wheel Falcons, and they really need to promote that net run rate, as you can see here, because that will be very important. And City Strikers do have, you know, games coming up against the number seven and eight, where I'm sure they will take, you know, full advantage of that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Adel Hussein, would you like to elaborate on the importance of the, you know, the run rate uh, in this particular mm. tournament, especially? I mean, yeah, I mean, they are... Um, one, two, three. I believe there are two teams on six points, two teams on four points, and two teams on eight Correct. points. I mean, it's very tight. And um, Darnell Dynamites do play City Strikers next week, um, so that'll be almost a sort of knockout game for both both of the sides. Run rate is going to play a massive part in this tournament, considering how close each of the teams are at this moment of time. And as we have seen in previous editions of BBICL, run rate does play a massive role. So it's going to be interesting to watch it unfold. Without, without doubt, without doubt. And um, I think, you know, we, we should probably go right into the matches now, some discussion to see w- w- what's going on. Uh, we, I think we had some fantastic games uh, that took place uh, this week. And, uh, and, you know, having been there myself, for my own game, I think uh, we will begin with that. The Firth Park Warriors were, was in Page Hall Panthers. Um, you know, and I, I think firstly, what, one main thing I, I must mention here, that Page Hall Panthers, uh, they, they have guys that are veterans. You know, they, they've been playing indoor cricket, outdoor cricket for a lot of time. I think they are far more experienced than any other team. And th- this can actually be seen in, in the way they play as well. I mean, if you... Look at the scorecard, the experience of individuals such as Jawad Salim, uh, Muhammad Qasim, uh, Arfan, the way they the line and lens their ball. Uh, it's not something you see in teams that have youngsters such as Tinsley or Manor. They won't have that consistency. Uh, Nasser Hussain, you know, you're someone who's actually played with these guys year in, year out. Uh, what would you say about their consistency and the experience that they bring to this league? Uh, you, you talk about Pedro, right? Yeah, yeah, Pedro. So I know this team from, I say way back. I mean, uh, I know this team since 2011, and mm. uh, they joined. They f- the first time they played indoor cricket was in 2010, and when they when they played in 2010, they were you know like as I um, elaborated last week that like Don and Dynamite, they were very inexperienced, mm-hmm. but over time they grew they grew with confidence and with experience. They start winning matches. 
Mm-hmm. It's the same with uh, you know Page Oil as well. I mean, they started from 2010-11, and yeah. then they, like um, Donald, you know, they they lost every game, and mm-hmm. then before you know it, in in the next two three years time, they become a, a big force in indoor cricket in wh- whichever whichever venue they play, whether it's BBICL, whether it's uh, in Firth Park cricket, or even in Bolchi Road. No, they no, they had a massive jump, and um, due to experience, they start winning more matches and tournaments. So yeah. I feel like mm-hmm. you know they, I still feel that they are very dangerous, mm-hmm. especially on on you know on their day they can be they can win anyone. And mm-hmm. I mean, I mean against Firth Park Warriors as well, uh, they looked very ordinary, uh, mm-hmm. especially with the bat. But in the yeah. field and with the ball, I think I think mm-hmm. they did well to be honest. But obviously Firth, Firth Park was uh, a notch higher. But yeah, you can't and, uh, count Pedro yeah. uh, out at all. Not a doubt. And and an example of their experiences, you know, uh, the bowling of Jawad here. I mean, this is, uh, I was facing him and I, I must confess, you know, I was totally confused with the direction of the ball. Uh, you know, he, I mean, putting it simply, I think he had my number here. Uh, he obviously must have assessed the kind of batsman I am, the way I play. So he knew my weaknesses, the cutters, and he consistently, the way he delivered the cutters, uh, I found to be quite quite remarkable. And I think he was, without a doubt, the pick of the bowler on that day. I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot of skill to be able to bowl the cutter um, that yeah. consistently. And, you know, Adil Hussain, you yourself being a premier bowler of uh, Donald Dynamite, uh, what would you say about this quality of bowling prior Jawad here? Um, well, I can't see it on the screen at the moment, but I was actually in the comms box as this was going on, Adnan, uh, me and Nasa were discussing, um, just trying to read the hand. But obviously, sitting in the dugout, it's much easier to read somebody's hand than it is once you're physically there. Um, I think it's come up now. So, yeah. As you uh, yeah see, I'm really sorry there. Um, I think there's some slight technical problem. I was under the impression the screen's being shared all that time. So, I, I do apologize about that. But, yeah, yeah here, uh, I think. So as we see, um, Jawad comes in, um, marks up his arm guard, and you scratch your head there. This um, seem a bit lost there, a bit Adnan. And there, if you just watch, just pause it there, just rewind it a little second, just a bit back. Mm-hmm. Just before he turns his wrist, I mean, with the thing with Jawad's lean is he can turn it both ways, and I can mm-hmm. only turn it. He has the off cutter, but he also has the leg, the leg cutter. Mm-hmm. But the thing is with his action, it's so similar, it's so difficult to pick. Um, doubt. Let's not forget, um, he did have a lot of bowlers around him who also helped to support him. I mean, Hasib, who was on debut, really impressed me yesterday. I mean, he didn't look he didn't look scared at all. He was just on fire. He had pure pace. And even Q cuts, he was amazing yesterday with his left arm seam. But, no doubt, yeah. And, and you know, the thing is, He's not just bowling these cutters. He clearly, he's a smart bowler. You know, there's an IQ going on here, a certain level of IQ, because look what he does here. So he's bowled me several deliveries that are slower cutters. Now he bowls a really faster delivery, much wider. You know, Mm -hmm. something I wasn't anticipating at all, and I end up edging it. So this kind of speaks volume on the experience and the skill set of uh, individuals and this team. And, you know, c- coming on to talking about Kasim, and Kasim, you know, he's a very much improved bowler. Previously, he's someone that tends to bowl consistently short again and again. But I, I was, you know, quite amazed by how consistently he was bowling that yoker length, that fuller length, getting in there. And if I'm not mistaken, he actually took quite a remarkable catch as well. Something you would expect uh, from the youngsters. Let's have a look. The water, you know, that the great athleticism there, diving there. You know, he could have hurt himself there potentially, but for the team, he took that dive. So Nasser Hussain, what would you say about this fielding effort here? I mean, he is the captain as well. He has to lead by example. So uh, I think it's an excellent, excellent uh, bowling from Kasim, and that catch was brilliant as well. And you could tell the enthusiasm as well that he's shown on the field. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when you're a captain, you've got to lead from the front and that's what makes the team. That's what makes you a good mm-hmm. leader. And he did just that. And, uh, you know, as we was explaining the bowling as well, he has improved as well. And I mean, when I was talking on the commentary box with Adil, yeah. and I was saying to him that the one weakness he has is he bowls too short. Mm-hmm. And when you, obviously when you bowl too short, it just sits up there and it's, any, it's easy for any batsman to lash out and take it, you know, just clear the boundary. But what, yeah. you know, like you said, I think, He's improved a lot in terms of bowling it a lot fuller. I think when you're bowling to you as well, he, he, I could see you was very uncomfortable against him as well because you were bowling mm-hmm. that fuller length. Yeah, without doubt. I could doubt. see that, you know, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I could see that you were waiting for that show ball because you're so used to, you know, playing that show ball whenever he bowls. But because mm-hmm. he bowls it fuller and he was swinging the ball as well, I yeah, that's what made him a lot more effective. With, without, there. without shadow of a doubt. And now you know, moving on, I think to the second innings, and I, I think Pedro did a relatively good job with that total with a new ball. Um, and I think they, they really did let themselves down in the batting department. And I have watched Nisar bat, and I know he's a really good batsman, you know. He normally, he will cut the ball, he will take those singles, he will settle in, and, you know, he, he, he can absolutely dominate a lot of bowlers. And I, I've looked at his record as well. He does have a quite, quite a good record um, of someone who's had limited games here. He's averaging 19, obviously, considering, you know, you have to retire at 25. And his strike rate is 142. So even though, you know, he's a novice to, to this league, he does have a really good record. But this kind of shot play, and, you know, we have to give, of course, a lot of credit to Shadab as well, who's a fantastic bowler. But, you know, was there any need for him to play this kind of shot? First ball up. Uh, Adil uh, Hassan, I would I like your opinion on this, please. Um, I, I don't think there was any need um, to play this shot. First ball of the game, a bit Brendan McCullum-esque, possibly you've been watching him um, on YouTube. But against a bowler like Shadab, you've got to take your time, watch out for his cut, because you've got to kind of get yourself in. You need one ball at least, minimum two balls to get yourself in. But I think it was a bit of a needless shot. And I think it was a big surprise for me because I believe um, Nisar is actually one of... Um, Page Hall's main batsman. Um, I think he has Without actually won them a game. Um, so I think that almost set the tone for the rest of the batters coming in, um, unfortunately for them on the night. Hey, and you First, can see, like, uh, you know, how the team was feeling right after that. Elated, a lot of pressure had come off. Uh, sorry about cutting you off there, Nasa. What were you going to say, please? So I was going to say, you know, with Nisar, yeah, like Adil said, um, you know, it was unnecessary for him to play that shot. I mean, he's played against Shadab numerous of times and mm-hmm. he should know how he bowls. You know, he's got two deliveries. He's got off-cutter, which he used mm-hmm. very effectively, and he's got a quicker one. So, mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, one thing I didn't understand is why he had to play a rush shot. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, what they were chasing, 90-plus runs. Mm-hmm. So, all he had yeah. to do was, uh, you know, if you felt uncomfortable playing Shadab, you could have mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, you play him out and then, you know, with the rest of the ball, is you can nudge it for a uh, you know, he, because he likes to put the ball, you know, mm-hmm. especially, you know, when uh, the bear balls, you know, he balls, um, you know, line and length. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he likes to ball it um, outside off as well. So he could have just rocked back and he plays courts like he normally does. But with, with Shadab, uh, you know, it just didn't make sense why he, pl- he had to play that shot first ball. He could have yeah. just played that. He could have defended it or he could have just played it on, on the mid wicket side. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he's the- good enough to do that. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you know, we didn't speak about this uh, in the last week, is that yeah. Shadab, you know, he has been a remarkable bowler uh, throughout in the various different, uh, you know, BBICL cricket arena leagues that we've had from the beginning. He has a really good record. And looking at this economy rate of 4.89, considering, you know, the amount of runs that can be picked up indoor in the various different ways uh, and the amount of wickets he's picked up, you know, he is a really difficult bowler to negotiate with. And uh, and one particular delivery that he has that he bowled to Nisar is the one that actually comes in. That that is a very difficult ball to play. And as a batsman, Nasser was saying, you know, me and uh, when we have to deal with this kind of delivery, look how much it moves in. So you know, yeah. I mean, just look at where the ball is before the the moment it pitches, and then from that point, just look at how much it comes in. That that is a from that point, you know. That I mean, if you can see the movement of my mouse, it's coming from that point to there. That's a lot yeah. of lateral movement. So it's a very difficult bowler to negotiate with. Um, but, but yeah, you're absolutely but he right. That, he, he, he could have played that across as well. I mean, he could have, because he knows that ball's going to come in, he mm-hmm. could have covered the stumps and he could have been on top of that ball. Yeah. You know, you, you know if he, because he played it that many times, but he likes to cut the ball. Mm-hmm. And I think he missed a trick in coming across and uh, trying to glance it towards leg. Yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. He, every ball's going to move in anyway. None of the balls move away. But credit to Shadab as well. I mean, he bowled, that was a terrific length he, uh, he bowled. Mm-hmm. And he, 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 he made good use of it. So, you know, kudos to him. And, and now, he, with, with the amount of experience he has, mm-hmm. you know, without I, I, doubt. we shouldn't be surprised. And, I mean, coming on now to Irfan here, I have played against Irfan on Sunday. And I, I remember he played uh, in innings that won the game for his team. And he is a batsman who I like to think, you know, he likes to stand 
his ground. He's someone who likes to stay there for a while, hit the ball around. And you saw glances of that in the first uh, over as well. I have absolutely no idea when Z is coming in, why he would play a shot like this straight away, knowing, you know, they're a wicket down and, you know, not taking his time to adjust to the line and length of uh, Z, who, you know, and Z is a very, uh, you know, good bowler that will consistently bowl a good pace at that line and length, which is difficult to negotiate with. So for batsmen who are coming in new to the innings, what would your advice be, Adil, uh, to, you know, make, uh, make themselves in a good position before they can go all out like this? Mm, I think with a bowler like Z, you know he's going to put it full and on a good length. You've got to take your time, adapt to conditions. I mean, I don't think, I think that's the only thing Paige Hall got wrong yesterday. And I think it was the pressure again, what I did say earlier was Nassar, one of their main batsmen, getting out. I think Nassar and Irfan bat really well together. And as soon as he saw him perish, he thought he had to do something because Nassar's usually the attacking, attack more of the attacking um, batter. I don't think, I think Irfan liked to um, take those little singles and not, not attack. So, I mm-hmm. mean, it was it was a bit of a rash shot in the end. Um, it didn't come off. Sometimes they do come off, sometimes they don't. You could say, was it early? If, if it went for a six, we'd all be sat here saying, wow, what a shot. But just on mm-hmm. that occasion, it just didn't come off for him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, being mindful of the time as well. Sorry, I, I wasn't keeping track of it on the side. It, it really does flow fast with you fine gentlemen. And uh, obviously, I had this up when the screen wasn't sharing, the technical problem we had. Uh, but yeah, we were discussing earlier, of course, the standings. And for Paige Ole, in the next few games, they would really like to make sure that they don't play in this manner against the higher level teams, especially, who, you know, will take full advantage of lapses in uh, in their mind, lapses in their batting. Uh, so, you know, even a score of 70, 80 can be good if one person at least is standing there and doing their job, just as Jawad tried to do uh, in that particular match. Uh, but yeah, moving on now, on to the next game for discussion. Uh, is this really much anticipated game between City Strikers and Furvale Falcons? And, uh, you know, this, obviously Nasser Hussein himself, uh, being a part of that team, uh, will be able to give us some, you know, insights of how the players themselves would have been, or what would they, the team would have been thinking as well, um, coming into this match, which was very much anticipated. Uh, but the bowling attack from the beginning, um, you know, the NASA, my question for you would be, when the bowlers are getting dominated in the early stages, what is the best way to tackle this? So Saeed Rahman bowls a good over, scientist comes on, he's under pressure, you know, uh, instantly. What is the team supposed to do in this kind of situation to make sure in the coming overs afterwards, we can minimize the amount of pressure, somehow try to minimize the runs that are being leaked? So I would say that, you know, I think what the way we missed a, a big trick uh, so first two overs, I mean, if you look at Saeed's over and as a hearts over, they ball brilliantly. I mean, they ball on the on the right channels. However, we were very inconsistent in terms of bowling in the right channels. We kept bowling them wide and you know half volleys when mm-hmm. we should have bowled a lot of cutters. And I mm-hmm. think we missed a the trick there. I mean, when Wakar came on as well, he uh, I don't think he bowled uh, cutters. He was just trying to bowl as fast as he can. When the, our original plan was to bowl cutters and make sure. Uh, that you know we don't we put we take the pace off the ball completely, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that, that I think we missed a, a big trick in. I think Azahat himself would know that he missed a trick in not bowling enough cutters, and mm-hmm. so uh, did uh, Waka. So he gave them a lot of. Uh, I mean, if you see that six as well, that went uh, past mm-hmm. me as well. You could yeah. tell that he had that intent in. You know, he want he had that intent in going for runs, and uh, I think another trick we missed is I think if you look at our fielding as well, I mean we're not we're not attacking. I mean, yeah. the, the intent was very negative. And if we showed, you know, a positive energy in the field, mm-hmm. and I don't think they would have got 127, but it, it, it seemed like in, in the middle of it, it seemed like our heads are, were down. It's like we already lost the match. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, credit has to be given to this fantastic player, Yusuf Ali, you know. Uh, I mean, his batting is something we didn't speak of last week. But look, I mean, look at his record. You know, he's averaging 30. He has a fantastic strike rate, 121. And he has I mean, been holding his team yeah. together. He's been doing a remarkable job. And you can see the, the skill he possesses. I mean, this is 
perhaps one of the best sixes I've seen in the league so far. This, this is a beautiful six, the way he picks up that ball. And, you know, the person bowling here is someone who's picked up a hat-trick. Of, in fact, four wickets and four balls. So it's someone who is experienced playing indoor. Uh, you know, someone who has a name indoor, a reputation. And, uh, you know, Yusuf Ali absolutely giving no respect there. Complete disregard and slight misfield there. Nasser Hussain, I can see the frustration there. But, yeah, what a fantastic uh, stroke player, Yusuf Ali. I mean, what would you say, um, Adil being there present in the commentary box about his batting style? Mm. I mean, Yusuf's the type of player who doesn't hold back on his shots. I mean, he was trying to reverse... Reverse sweep uh, as I hit um, at one point. I mean, he just doesn't feed the ball. He doesn't feed anything. I think he's in really good form. However, what the stats don't show you is there were three drop catches um, mm -hmm. of Yusuf last night. But he took his chance once he was dropped, and he did mm -hmm. what he had to do. He's one of those yeah. players you don't want to drop because, as you can, as the stats tell you, he does go on to make a big score. And I believe he has retired quite a few times. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe. The thing with City is if you can, if you are able to dismiss Yusuf at the top, there are almost certain barriers where you can break into the lower order. Yeah, without doubt, you're absolutely right. And you know, there I was analyzing the statistics from the last game as well, and you're absolutely right. I mean, Arman, I think, dropped Yusuf on three separate occasions, or forgive me, at least two occasions, and maybe the third time by someone else. But Yusuf Ali is someone you do not want to drop. Because, you know, he will devastate your team and he will play his shots. And uh, I can guarantee you some of those shots will come off. So he's definitely not some. He's one of those individuals you want to make sure your fielding is at tip-top point. And, you know, this is one of the things with Firth Park Warriors as well. Uh, in comparison to, you know, their performance in other leagues, their fielding has uh, been fantastic. It's, it's really something that has kept them together. The keepers have made sure no runs are being leaked. And teams that are going forward into the semi-finals and finals eventually, they will really need to make sure that they are not leaking any runs through any kind of fielding faults. And uh, Nasser Hussain, I mean, uh, you, bringing you on, what do you think is the importance of fielding in an indoor league like this uh, from your experience? I think it's the first priority. I mean, the, the main importance of cricket, especially in indoor, is fielding. You have to be, it's not just about catching your catches, but you've got to be uh, on your toes at all times. I mean, whatever you're feeling, whether you're feeling the boundary, whether you're feeling in point, whether you're the keeper, whether you're square leg, you've got to be mm -hmm. on point. I mean, if you look at their running as well, Yusuf's and uh, uh, Abu Sufyan early on, I mean, they run for everything. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we, what we didn't do is we didn't attack the ball compared mm -hmm. to uh, City Strikers when we came out to uh, bat. So, uh, but massive credit to City Strikers. I mean, they, they battled brilliantly. They picked their gaps. They run really well, and uh, we, we, we unfortunately we didn't do that, and uh, we deserve to lose. The yeah, I'm, players I'm, are yeah. I mean, you know, just this is a learning curve, of course. When you're pick, when you're playing like dominant teams like this, very strong bowling. I mean, good, great shot there uh, by Sharu. But when you're playing really dominant teams uh, with strong bowling attacks and with explosive batsmen, you know, these are things that you learn and pick up, and you try yes. to improve on in the later stages of the game. You know, you shouldn't be deflated. You shouldn't feel, you know, stressed out with this situation because this is a game of cricket yeah, yeah. and th exactly. these things happen at all times. And and we try to take, you know, uh, a lesson from these uh, situations every single time going ahead. And with, sorry, with the limited time, I think I just received a notification as well that I've been given increased uh, Zoom <laughs> meeting time. So uh, with that in mind, I think we should probably move on to the next game. And, uh, you know, so, sorry, let me just bring up the matches again, if you don't mind. I did have everything up in the tabs, but uh, they <laughs> had some technical problems. Uh, technical yeah. yeah, technical problems weren't that nice. Um, coming on to this fantastic game, the highest score by any team in the Indoor League, 164, with the special contribution from Zain Gazamfar. I mean, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't there live, but you know, uh, Nasser Hussain and uh, Adil, you've both had the opportunity to witness the batting of Zain. I mean, Adil, what would you say uh, about the aggressive uh, strike rate, 247? What would you say the style of batting mm. was like uh, of Zain Ghazanfar? Is this something you yeah. expected of him? 
No, um, it was a big surprise. I mean, Zane's not had the best of times with the bat and he's not known to be a very aggressive batsman. He's very good with his little dabs, little singles. You know he's going to get his runs. But the way he went about it yesterday, I mean, he was on fire. He was creaming everything. They were bowling short, full, whatever they were bowling. He was just creaming it. However, we may add with the fielding we may come on to later, but the fielding just wasn't just wasn't right. But Zane, he, he had a night out last night. He had great fun and it was great to watch as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is a point that, that's been brought to my attention from like various different viewers there. It's that the fielding set, you know, hasn't really been the best by, by uh, Tinsley uh, at times, like the way they are putting their fielders in locations they're putting them, they're leaving a lot of wide gaps open. Uh, for someone like Bash, I can see there's a significant, huge gap here in the mouse, where my mouse is. I mean, that's that very easy pickings for someone like uh, of Bash's caliber. And uh, so, you know, Nasser Hussain, going ahead, what would your recommendation be for Tinsley uh, for their field setup? How can they make improvements that can help them avoid, uh, you know, leaking so many runs and going ahead? I think you need to have the right fielders in the right place. The second thing is uh, you need to bring that mid on uh, forward, <laughs> you know, from the start in order to restrict, you know, the runs. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that, uh, you know, aggressive intent. You've got to have that positive intent. How? Mm -hmm. By having that mid on forward, which he did, and then he went back. Mm -hmm. So I think they missed a trick with that. I think they should have had him forward and tell the bowler, just ball line and length. You don't need to worry about anything else. The ball line and length and ball according to your field. I think that's what he should have done. Mm -hmm. So I think they missed a big trick in, like you said, you know, they left the big gaps. And I think that, you know, I do agree that they have left the big gaps. And I think they should have had the field in. Yeah, the start absolutely. Just to put a lot more pressure on. I mean, you know, Tinsley have my full sympathies. This is the first time, and, you know, I explained last week for teams coming in, it takes a bit of time and experience uh, to make That's a difference true. in these leagues. But I'm just observing the field set here, just analysing this. And, you know, this I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it may be the power play overs at the moment, which is why we have less fielders. But there is absolutely a huge gap here. I mean, you know, when you have a power play going on, um, and, and a batsman like Zane, who, who can be aggressive, who can play at a really good strike rate, and he has the stroke play a, a, available in his arsenal, why would you leave yeah. such a huge gap for him, which he's going to, you know, capitalize on? Uh, so, Adil, what would you say for teams like this, um, you know, that, that are leaving these huge gaps? Should they be having maybe practice uh, or maybe some discussions beforehand to kind of analyze the player and think about the player before they set the field? I think I think it's a bit of both here, and I believe um, this isn't the first time um, this has happened for Tinsley. Unfortunately, I think especially with um, if you're going to ball spin um, to leave a huge gap, does you just see Bash just lets that one straight through that gap as we we're just talking about? I mean, you you just can't afford to do it. I mean, they're off to a good start. You just you just can't leave that amount of space for any team. It doesn't matter who you are, who the batter is. As soon as it passes through that area, it's gone. You've got nobody there. I mean, if you look on the leg side, you've got Darnish in his Liverpool shirt. I mean, the ball didn't come to him once, and mm -hmm. that was not that unfortunately wasn't seen by the team. And hopefully, there will be this will be a learning curve for them um, that they can improve on because if they did have that field covered last night, I do believe they would have stopped minimum forty runs yesterday. But that was unfortunately not picked up on, and hopefully. Tinsley will take that back into their camp and speak about it with each other. And mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see them come back stronger um, for the next week. Without doubt, you know, Tinsley is a team that I, I think has a lot of room for improvement and they definitely have the talent available to make a big difference in the table. And I think going ahead, yeah. uh, Nasser Hussein, I'll let yeah. you expand on this, but I think going ahead, that they can cause trouble to teams if they work on these basics. Yes, Nasser Hussein, please go ahead. Yeah, so just to add on, Adil. Um, so basically, I think if what Tinsley needs to do to improve is ask the bowler where he's gonna bowl. Now it's easy to you know you know place your field wherever you want, but it's all about the bowler as well. Now you gotta ask the bowler, okay, where where do you want to bowl at him? You gonna bowl him outside off, or you gonna bowl him towards leg stump or middle stump? So where are you gonna bowl him? And wherever you're gonna bowl him, we're gonna uh, we're gonna Place the field according to your bowling, of where where you're gonna place, uh, where, you know where you're gonna bowl. You're gonna bowl outside off, you know leg stump. 
So I think the fielder or the captain should have went, to, should have approached the bowler and asked him, okay, where are you going to bowl? Okay, I'm going to bowl Asad off. Okay, then I'll have a fielder out. So where you said there was a big gap in mid on, I would have left a fielder out there and say, okay, you bowl uh, outside off. And mm-hmm. I've got a field set for you outside off. So I would have two fielders outside off and told him, you know what, you bowl outside off. And yeah. uh, just keep uh, one fielder in leg side. But, uh, mm-hmm. but if I was the captain or if I was the bowler, I would have had all, both my fielders on the off, mm-hmm. off, uh, offside because I could see Zane and especially and Bash especially, they're very strong offside players. So mm-hmm. I would have two players on the offside and uh, and where the gap was on the mid-on, I would have had a, uh, definitely had a, would have had a fielder there. And yeah, outside absolutely. I, I'm sorry, I'm not sharing that current screen at the moment. I just closed it before you could speak, so I do apologise about that. But you're absolutely right. And I think with the description you've given, that paints a really good picture of exactly where the field set should be. Uh, and going ahead, that, that's exactly what they need to work on. And, uh, you know, moving on to, to the last game now, uh, if, okay. I, if that's okay. I'm, I'm sorry, let me just check the, if that's okay, the timing of the meeting, what's going on. I don't know if you can share, if you can see my screen at the moment. It's a bit odd for me. I can't. To, it's gone to unlimited, Adnan. Oh, is it? All right, that's fantastic yeah. then. That, that, that's really good. Now, the final game that I wanted to talk about is Donald Dynamite. Another really high-scoring game. And, uh, you know, Donald Dynamite, I think in this particular game, very dominating with the bat. Uh, Arsalan Tariq, you know, absolutely fantastic batsman, really dominant batsman. And uh, maybe he didn't have the best season uh, previously in the mini Indo league that we had. Uh, and maybe in the first few innings, he wasn't uh, at his best. But this, I think, definitely has given him some good form. And I think that's something we would like to see being carried forward. Adil, you being from the team, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what would you have to say on this? I mean, yeah, obviously, it's amazing um, that Arslan has come back into form. I mean, it's always a very pleasing batter, lovely to watch on the eye. He's another the best of tournaments so far. But last night, I think he had a point to prove. I mean, he wasn't in the team at the start. He just returned from holiday. But he looked like a man with a point to prove. He played really well, played quite cautiously. However, one thing um, we haven't noted is if you just look at the scorecard, if you go back to the scorecard for a second, uh, Adnan, um, there was only one, two, three, four, five boundaries last night, and they counted up to 26 runs. Mm-hmm. So the Adonal actually ran really well, and they made 114 runs just via running. Mm-hmm. I mean, that just shows you how much the importance is. It's not all about hitting. It's not all about hitting. 114 runs just yeah. by singles, doubles, threes is a massive amount. I mean, I think Mana did miss out a trick. They were a bit sloppy in the field, but nonetheless, Donald did take the advantage last night. And that's what I was saying. This is something that, you know, you have emphasised continuously, the importance of running indoor. And they've only got 11 extras as well. And, you know, I mean, you can see 70, 80% majority of the runs are coming through, uh, you know, taking those three runs, especially with the new rule that we brought in, that you get two runs for running. You know, that instantly your strike rate is jumping to 200. Uh, with, with that, you know, I mean, if you're on your first ball, of course, and so it provides a fantastic opportunity. Uh, you know, if you've taken two singles and it's hit the wall, in two balls, you've scored six runs, as opposed to you hitting a six and then playing three dot balls, which, you know, is not as uh, efficient economically speaking here. So Nasa Hussain, I think, uh, what would you say about this performance by Donald Dynamites? No, it's a, it's a brilliant performance. I mean, uh seeing Arslan Tariq coming back in form is, is a big plus for uh, Donald. I mean, he's been out of form for a while, but seeing him in form, it should help his confidence uh, massively going into the tournament. But mm-hmm. seeing uh, the top four, I mean, Shahid Mohamed, uh, Shweb Khalik as well in the middle, they, you know, we, we know how they are as a batsman. So mm-hmm. did it brilliantly. And yeah, I did emphasize a lot on running as well. And, and, and again, this, this proves it. That mm-hmm. even with our boundary, like what Adil uh, said, mm-hmm. that they, they only hit, they only made what four or five boundaries. I think they hit. Mm-hmm. So even without even without boundaries, they got to 140 runs. So yeah. it just shows the importance of running between wickets, mm-hmm. and you got to have that good communication between the players. And Donald made full use of that, and you know, what? M- massive credit to Donald. And I, f- yeah. I feel like they w- they are one of the favorites to, uh, you know. Yeah, abso- for, for absolutely. And I think uh, I've just brought this page up just to share that they do have two difficult games 
coming ahead. And, I'm, I'm, you know, Adil, I'm sure in your camp, you've had discussions about these uh, upcoming games between uh, yourself and City Strikers and Pajol Panthers, especially the City Strikers, how Donald would negotiate with their, you know, battery. Uh, you know, it's almost like what the West Indies had uh, back in the 70s, 80s, the, you know, uh, guys thundering down with good pace, good swing. So, uh, you know, um, it'll be really interesting to see how they negotiate. And, uh, of course, Donald themselves do have that pace battery as well. I mean, if they're available to play, that is, uh, to bring to the table. Uh, so it'll be, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen in the next two games. Um, but, of course, we should also bring some attention to the performance of Manor. And I, I, I especially of the Sh- uh, Uncle Shakil here, if I'm pronouncing the name properly, Uncle Shaquille or Shakil? Is it Shak? Uh, sorry, I, I don't know. Please Shaquille. correct me, Shaquille, Uncle Shaquille. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what a fantastic innings. I mean, you know, and sorry, Ali, Ali Verk. Ali Verk, yeah. yeah. very bad with names. But I mean, these two have been pillars of their team. They've made significant portions of the run. And, uh, you know, Uncle Shaquille, I believe this is only his second game playing in this format. So he, that, that is a really quick adjustment to playing in these different conditions. Uh, so Nassau Singh, what would you say about, you know, his ability to adjust so quickly and score at, at a significant strike rate for his team? I mean, he's got the technique for it. So he's, he's, a, he's a good good indoor player. I mean, uh, I don't know if you remember, he's played uh, two seasons ago as well uh, for, uh, was it Corner Tigers, I think, when, they, when he newly uh, joined? So mm-hmm. uh, he will play then as well, and I mean he, he's got the he's got the temperament for it. He's got the um, intent to go after the bowlers. So mm-hmm. he made full use of his skills and his experience. And uh, I mean, look, look at the way he's glancing that ball. Like you know, he's he's got so much confidence in him. And yeah. uh, I think that's what uh, that's what you know got him runs. And in the dugout, the youngsters are looking as well. They're going to look at him as a as a big inspiration going forward. And uh, Ali Berg, I mean, he's he's been he's he's a good batter. I mean, you could tell he's an experienced campaigner. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he, I know it's, it's it's only his second or third game in the in the tournament, but I mean, the way the way he played, I mean, you can tell that these two are the eldest member in mm-hmm. the in the league uh, in the in the team. So um, having Shaquille um, in the side uh, was a bonus for uh, for Manic Gladiators, and uh, I mean. He, you know, he's, he's a terrific batsman. I've, I've I've been following him for a while. I mean, I've been, I've been, you know, I was a little kid when I when I used to watch it, but and he's he's a he's a good batter and he's a very aggressive batsman. So mm-hmm. uh, I mean, well, massive well done to him. And he's not the, he might not be the best of runner because obviously of his age, mm-hmm. but he's made full use. Uh, he's, he stayed there till the end. Mm-hmm. So did Ali Verk. So he stayed there till the end, and uh, that, that's given the youngsters a lot to learn uh, going forward. Uh, yeah. you know, the the longer you stay in the crease, mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, and you dig in deep, the, the, there's there's a big chance of you winning the game and getting the total. Absolutely. So you know, going going forward for both of these teams, especially in in the uh, next league as well, I think now they are starting to you know get their team together, and I I think. With this team, if they build further, if they make small improvements in terms of their fielding and making sure, you know, they don't end up in a situation where only two players are making up 95 plus percent of the runs, um, that could really be a good target. And with a decent bowling attack, 93 even, you know, you could say is a good enough total to defend. Would you um, agree with this observation, Adil? Yeah, I think I think I think it was an amazing performance last night. I mean, if you look at the scorecard there, two of the most experienced batters made all the runs. If any of the younger players did chip in, Donald could have been in trouble last night. I mean, if you just look at it, that, that's just a clear example that it just it just didn't happen for the youngsters last night. But the class of Ali and Shaq really showed last night. And it's just a shame nobody was around to support them because if it was, it could have been almost a different story for them last night. They were just unfortunate on the night. Mm-hmm. And of course, I think it slightly it's unfair. I mean, I do apologize, you know, when we're analyzing these things, we miss out a lot of players, you know, who do perform really well. I, I do apologize about it. It's just with the limited time, we try to look at the main performances. Uh, but, you know, what, another individual, just before we conclude our session, um, I, I wanted to mention Jawad, uh, you know, fantastic batting performance and also... You know, he's one of the most economical bowlers 
uh, across the board, 4.85 throughout the league. So, you know, he does really, uh, as a captain and a player, shine for his team. And he does lead from the front. Uh, so fantastic performance by him. So I, I would just like to hope that, you know, he. Uh, I would really like a team like Donald uh, that has improved over the years to actually go on to the knockout stages. Uh, and I mean, potentially winning as well. That, that would be really fantastic. So, yeah, you know, well done to them for what they've done so far. Um, and in terms of, I think, the future matches that, that are coming up in the next week, I, you know, I, I think there is much to anticipate uh, in, in the upcoming games. There are some very important games between Burngreave Tigers, the Firth Park Warriors, I think, the top of the table uh, conflict that's going to take place. That, that'll be quite interesting. Uh, and another important game, I, I think, is City Strikers and Donald Dynamites, because I think if one is to lose, that could have a huge impact on the uh, uh, chances of actually making it through to the knockoff. Uh, Nasser Hussain, what, what would you say about uh, this uh, dilemma? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's left it open uh, completely. And, uh, you know, seeing the encounter, I think one, one game I'm really looking forward to is Burnley Tigers and First Park Warriors. I think mm-hmm. these two teams, uh, you know, they they got every, you know, base covered uh, in terms of their skills. I mean, uh, if you look at Burn Grieve, uh, you know, but I've been very, very, very impressed with Burn Grieve as well, especially with their fielding. I mean, mm-hmm. they've been, the, oh, I think the, the standout performers, uh, standout team in the tournament. And seeing, the, seeing them playing against the experienced Perth Park Warriors, that for me was a standout as one of the most anticipated game of uh, the upcoming matches. And uh, I'm also looking forward to watching Donald and City Strikers. And uh, the ball's going to be fairly new as well. Uh, for mm-hmm. City Strikers, so it's going to be interesting to know what Donald will have. You know, they, they obviously they will be planning for, uh, you know, how to play Asif and uh, Imran Khan uh, up front. So it's going to be interesting to know how they will play. You know? Yeah, I mean, fantastic. Uh, I mean, thank you very much, Adil Hassan and Nasser Hussain for joining me today. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I look forward to speaking again next week with you guys. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'll also look forward to the games and uh, potentially facing you guys very soon as well. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so yeah, we'll conclude the meeting there. Thank you very much and take care. Yeah, take care, Adnan. Take care, Adil. Take care. All right, then, guys. I, I will yeah. stop the recording. <laughs> good, good stuff. Good stuff. I think at the start I didn't um, realize uh, the issue with the you know uh, screen sharing. Just let me know if there's a problem with that in the future. I was supposed to be sharing from the beginning, but I think that it's, uh, it's all right. They'll get a chance to probably see us instead. So, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. great stuff, guys. So, yeah. Anyway, take care, guys. All right. Oh, I'll, uh, take I'll upload and let you guys know when it's on Google Drive, all right? Yeah, no okay. worries, bro. Take Don't care. Worry, bro. Bye. Yeah.